This program is about good manufacturing practices, or GMPs, and how they establish the foundation for drug product quality. At the conclusion of this program, you should be able to recognize and recall three major tragedies that resulted in the establishment of the good manufacturing regulations. Describe what is meant by CGMP and list the controls CGMPs regulate. Explain why following CGMPs is so important and list the ways in which the FDA determines if a company is following CGMPs. And finally, describe how the FDA protects the public when there are CGMP violations. The GMP regulations were originally established over time after tragedies like the elixir sulfonilamide catastrophe. In the mid-1930s, S.E. Massengill, a pharmaceutical manufacturer, had been selling treatment for streptococcal infections in tablet and powder form. The company started receiving requests for the product to be in liquid form as well. So in 1937, Harold Watkins, the company's chief pharmacist and chemist, created the liquid form by dissolving the active ingredient in diethylene glycol, basically antifreeze, and adding raspberry flavoring. The new formulation was called elixir sulfonilamide. Although animal testing should have been routine, Massengill performed none, and there were no regulations at the time requiring the pre-market safety testing of new drugs. Before all of the product could be recalled, over 100 people died as a result of the toxic diethylene glycol. Now, this incident hastened final enactment in 1938 of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. Another tragedy prompting change in drug regulations was the 1941 sulfathiazole calamity. In December of 1940, the Winthrop Chemical Company put out on the market sulfathiazole tablets contaminated with the sedative phenobarbital. FDA's investigation into Winthrop sulfathiazole production and the agency's efforts to retrieve the drug remaining on the market revealed numerous control deficiencies in the plant and serious irregularities in the firm's attempt to recall the tainted tablets. The incident prompted the FDA to require detailed controls in drug production at Winthrop and throughout the industry an approach that became the basis for production control standards for all pharmaceuticals. Now, this tragedy resulted in more than 300 deaths and injuries. The final tragedy that prompted development of the current regulations was the 1962 thalidomide disaster. Thalidomide first entered the German market in 1957 as an over-the-counter remedy for nausea. By 1960, Thalidomide was marketed in 46 countries, with sales nearly matching those of aspirin. Around this time, Australian obstetrician Dr. William McBride discovered that the drug also alleviated morning sickness. He started recommending this off-label use of the drug to his pregnant patients, setting a worldwide trend. In 1961, McBride began to associate this so-called harmless compound with severe birth defects in the babies he delivered. Investigation found that the drug interfered with the baby's normal development, causing many of them to be born with shortened, absent, or flipper-like limbs. A German newspaper soon reported 161 babies were adversely affected by thalidomide, leading the makers of the drug, who had ignored reports of the birth defects associated with it, to finally stop distribution within Germany. Other countries followed suit, and by March of 1962, the drug was banned in most countries where it was previously sold. In July of 1962, President John F. Kennedy and the American press began praising FDA inspector Francis Kelsey, who prevented the drug's approval within the United States despite pressure from the pharmaceutical companies and FDA supervisors. Kelsey felt the application for thalidomide contained incomplete and insufficient data on its safety and effectiveness. Among her concerns was the lack of data indicating whether the drug could cross the placenta, which provides nourishment to a developing fetus. Before the drug could be recalled, 
thousands of children were born with birth defects. These three tragedies were responsible for the establishment of the GMPs,